Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are going rogue discussing sovereign citizens. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Hot Tub Scholarship Lager. From the Rogue Brewing Company in, was it New Hampshire? Newport. Portland. Newport. Oh, yes. Newport. Uh, Newport, Oregon. 5.4% by Portland volume. Portland is the only city in Oregon. Who are we yeah, kidding? who knows? Who knows? I couldn't remember all of a sudden. Yes. I like the cans on this. So, um, super cool deal with this beer. Um, so, Hot Tub Scholarship Lager. Um, they actually started a scholarship fund. Um, after the passing of Jack Joyce, who is the founder of Rogue Brewing, or Rogue Ales, I think is their technical name. Um, and so it, let's see, who does it go to? Oh, okay. So it is specifically for um, students studying fermentation science at Oregon State University. And interestingly, so the hot tub reference in the name um actually has to do both with the founder's affinity for hot tubs, which I get. It's fantastic. Amen. Amen. And the first person to receive one of these scholarships after they paid for all their school stuff apparently went rogue and bought themselves a hot tub. That's interesting. That was, that's, interesting. that's their phrasing. So, uh, so we're actually here today on a scholarship program. We're, we're, we're sure. doing our part for charity. I thought, and maybe I'm misremembering, were you just wrong? Yes, I was okay, wrong. Okay, never yeah. mind. Yeah, we we thought there was a hot tub company involved in the scholarship. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. it was a weird Google thing. Like maybe the hot tub company also did a scholarship. Okay. But cool thing, they actually uh, just last year gave out uh, sixty thousand dollars worth of scholarships. Cool. Nice. That's that means lot. that's sixty thousand dollars invested in the future of beer. It is. That's a, that's a lot of beer that was drank. Is all I, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. Yeah. If you're going to college to make beer, are you required to drink a higher level of beer while you're there? As part of your studies, of course. Of course, oh. yes. I, I, all I know is that I should have gotten a, uh, I should have gotten an honorary degree when I was in college. You put oh, in the yeah. hours. I put in the hours. I, put yeah. in the, you know, uh, I think he put in the ounces. Good point, good point. All right, so today we're talking about sovereign citizens. And as I am want to do, I kind of want to go around and talk a little bit about what we think a sovereign citizen is from our own understanding. Uh, you want to start, John? Yes. They are people who make compelling YouTube videos <laughs> about how to get out of speeding tickets. That's, that's pretty good. pretty good definition. What do you, what do you think there, Madam Mistress? Uh, so I think there is a definition of what they have come to be known as and a, a different definition um <laughs> and so, a different one a different one but um i i think they've kind of come to be known as people who attempt to manipulate the law in such a way that it doesn't apply to them yeah yeah um but i think practically could be something more along the lines of like somebody who I guess more like a stateless person. Okay. Um, but that is not how it is applied yeah, uh, uh, at all. The, 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 the problem when you're trying to come up with what a, uh, a sovereign citizen is is that they, they don't seem to agree on what it is. Shocker. There's, there's a bunch of different varieties. Uh, very few are, are would meet your definition of stateless. Most, right. of these, most of these people actually do believe that they are citizens of a state. They just don't believe that they're citizens of the federal government. So you're saying they haven't run a platform yet. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, there, there's a couple of varieties. The, uh, the first variety, and, and, and it's actually probably the smallest and probably the one that I think has the, 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 the best grounding, mm -hmm. though, is, is the people that believe that uh, they're, they're religious sovereign citizens. Mm -hmm. And these are people that's, that's uh, uh, foundational beliefs. Uh, state that nobody has authority over them but God. Mm -hmm. And since you aren't God, since the federal government isn't God or the state government isn't God, they mm -hmm. they have no authority. Yeah. Uh, you'll see these these U.S. or these videos on YouTube where they're being arrested and they're they're telling them you've got no authority over me. You're 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 not God. Uh, and I, reason I I think that they probably have the the strongest. Uh, place is because there is a freedom of religion. Right. And if your religion says that, I can see where the argument could could, could come in. Right. So ha have you ever seen any of these guys while they're talking to the police, have the God police come through and save them? I, I, I've 
I, I, I've never quite seen that uh, that the, one. The, thus far, the holy deity has not interfered. In oh, the, okay, uh, okay, uh, I wasn't sure. How, however, you know, it's it's early. <laughs> it's early. Um, <laughs> In, in, in the grand scope of things, it's it, 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 it's fairly early. The much more common type of, of sovereign citizen are these uh, these people that call themselves constitutional sovereign citizens. Um, <laughs> and, Sorry. And, and again, there, there's a bunch of different arguments, but but the the general argument is uh, the most common argument. And again, the one of this group that I think has holds the, the greatest water is this thought that. The Constitution doesn't apply to them because the Constitution was illegally ratified, and they they believe in the Articles of Confederation. If you know something about the Articles of Confederation, that was a lot closer to uh, to independent countries uniting right. and, and forming a confederation than, uh, than than states as we understand it uh, forming a nation. Well, and it, it, it's become common practice that uh, for people who the Constitution didn't apply to them. What the state will often do to substitute is they will apply riot batons to them, and uh, wow. that, that seems to that seems to be a nice stand-in. Well, I, I, wow. I, I mentioned I mentioned that I think this is the one that has the uh, the, the argument of the constitutionalist constitutional sovereign citizens mm-hmm. uh, that's got the the most uh, uh, um, I don't know what the word is it's the most logical I guess right. because their argument is. Again, that the U.S. Constitution was not properly ratified. Was invalid. And, and, and the logic behind that holds some historical uh, weight to it. If you remember, the Articles of Confederation said that, uh, that for it to be, to be adjusted, to be modified, it required unanimity of the states. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they called this Philadelphia Convention because the Articles was a, was a failed experiment. Yeah. It, it lasts six, six, six years and some odd months. It's not a, it's not a great experiment. Yeah. Uh, and they, they knew that we needed something stronger to prevent things like Shays Rebellion and mm-hmm. the Whiskey Rebellion and stuff like that. Well, the first thing they did when they met in Philadelphia was they, they, they shut all the doors, they, they put guards outside, they swore everybody to secrecy, and then they said, when nine states agree to this, it, it, it'll be ratified. Right. Well, the argument here is that that means that, that, that it didn't follow the proper procedures. Mm-hmm. It's not... It's not the just law. It was a revolution of sorts. It was a revolution. Yeah. It was a, 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 a revolution without guns, but it was yeah. a it was our second American revolution. Yeah. What do you think about that argument, though? I mean, I, I, I think it's I think it is equally valid to making the argument that um, the whole uh, revolution was uh, uh, not legal. And so yes, because there was no right to revolution under yeah. the under the British law. So, so therefore, we we all apply to British Parliament law, and you could take that back to whichever time period you pick. Yeah, or Roman, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah we we could uh, go to anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but at least there's a at least there is a step of logic that is in yeah. there. Yeah, but, but they arbitrarily picked this one. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Well, and it it's flimsy at best because there are. Two, uh, I think, significant detractors to that. The first one being that the representatives of the other four states didn't come through and go, um, "Hold up, we didn't verify, we didn't, you know, agree to this." Yeah, eventually they, they did. Yeah, that's just, eventually all the yeah. states did ratify. Yeah, and and so their continued operation under this new government. Um, I, I think indicates their ratification of it. Yeah. Um, but secondly, if I remember correctly, and I'm sure you will correct me if I don't, um, is that particular part was to amend the Articles of Confederation. That's right. What we did was crumpled that up, threw it away, and did something completely yeah, we, different, which being that that is not an amendment to it, it is a creation of a whole new thing, it has no reason yeah, but he, to he, be under those rules. Yeah, but he, here's the problem is that that convention was called by the states for the stated purpose of amending the articles. Fine. So they were called for one purpose, they did something else. Yeah. Uh, that's why in my and class so, I always teach that as the second American revolution. And so I think that you could... Being that they came together for that purpose, I think that's kind of where some semblance of logic comes to. But there was a point where they said, guys, this is this is FUBAR. Yeah. And threw it out. 
and started something else, you know? But uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I think there's some truth to that. Uh, let, let's talk about some of the verbiage that's been used uh, to, to discuss this before. Uh, you, you, you hear one of the things that these, these uh, uh, constitutional sovereign citizens do is they, and they're really good at, is using the verbiage that's that that's in our our founding documents, right. that's in our uh, our legal laws, whether it be the Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, mm-hmm. or later even the Constitution. Mm-hmm. They use that verbiage to build their argument, and they use it pretty well. Um, now I'll say that they 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 pick and choose. They, they don't want we don't recognize the whole document because if we do, our, our argument falls apart. Right. But you know uh, the. The, the, the language that we are all taught when we are young, you know, if you've been in junior high, you all know the language. Governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Right. Well, these people say, I don't consent. If I don't consent, then then I, 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 I'm not part of your, your system. Right. And again, I think there's a logic to that. Okay. Uh, but the problem with that is that doesn't come from law. That comes from, from the Declaration. Uh, but But... But the point is still there that they're they're looking for something. Uh, this isn't unique to the United States. The idea of sovereign citizens are are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, it tends to be be the the most in the U.S. and 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 right behind that is where, I guess where you would expect the U.K. Right. Um, they're called by a lot of different names in the U.K. in the Commonwealth. They're usually called freemen on the land. Uh, but, it, but in the U.S., sovereign citizens or free inhabitants is, is, are, are the terms that, that we use most of the time. Right. Uh, one of the, 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 the more famous of these uh, these free inhabitants, people that refer to themselves that, was Terry Nichols mm-hmm. uh, of, you know, along with Timothy McVeigh, was a co-conspirator in right. the uh, uh, Oklahoma City bombing. My, right. my brain is shutting down. I'm getting old and it's not working very, mo- very much anymore. Um, and and we have seen cases. I'm not going to say a lot of cases um, because, you know, if we have any listeners in Israel, they'll look at us and go, no, you don't have a lot of cases. But we've seen a growing number of cases of domestic terrorism in the name of sovereign citizens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, think of the Republic of Texas movement. Think of, mm-hmm. uh, of Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's happening more and more and more as, as things are going on. Yeah, to the, the extent, guy who flew a plane into an IRS building, I think it was. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. the a guy, couple of times, the, I think. and the guy that landed his helicopter on the White House lawn right. during the Clinton administration. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if it, 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 it would, you would expect that to happen when you realize that that currently it's estimated that there are three hundred thousand people that identify themselves as sovereign citizens in the yeah. United States. Well, you know. It, it, Two, two things I want to address there. So I, I was watching a, a video that was mostly a, a critique and criticism of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two interesting points came out. They're One, easier to find. Yeah. Much. One is that in a recent survey, recent as of when the video came out, which I don't know. Um, but in a recent survey, law enforcement listed them as a top threat to the U.S., even above that, terrorists. That, that was a 2014 survey. Yeah. 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 Um, the second one, you know, you mentioned, what was the number you mentioned of how many there are? 300,000. 300, I saw one that, that ranged anywhere from 10,000 to 50,000. And she found some that ranged up to what, a million? Half a million. Half a well, million. Okay. And so it's yeah, yeah. like, I've seen know, a lot of those numbers and a lot, they break these down a lot more. The 300,000 right. number that I found was if you include everybody that calls themselves this, right. Uh, it, it, the ten thousand number I saw was 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 active participants in it. Mm-hmm. You know, so so you start looking at it, and you can call yourself anything. You know, we're we're members of the Libertarian Party. We see people call themselves anarchists all the time. People running the Republican Party it, say, yeah, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a yeah. Libertarian. Yeah, you just you, know. you don't ever know. Um, when it's convenient. But yeah, yeah. I it's also, I, 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 I'm glad you mentioned that because I saw a, a, a description. I think it was Wikipedia that described these guys as right leaning anarchists. Which I was like, what? No. No, I wouldn't call them anarchists at all because they do recognize. The vast majority of them they, recognize a state. Uh, yeah, yeah, their state or, government. Or a rule of law, even if yeah. it's not, yeah. you know. But yeah. that, that's what always kills me is, is if you watch these YouTube videos, and I'm sure you, when y'all were researching this, did y'all go into YouTube hell and just watch like video after video? A little video? bit, yeah. yeah. Tons and yeah. tons of cop videos, like interactions. Um, 
with these people and cops. I do not consent. I do not consent. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I started to go there and I quickly pulled out because I realized yeah. as entertaining as it was, it Yeah, you were going to get lost and nothing yeah. productive uh, was going to happen. Producer, make, make sure that you uh, that you cut that, uh, that, that that little clip there where John started to go there but quickly pulled out. We want to <laughs> yeah. save that for later. Um, Why do you think I don't have kids? <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you start seeing this stuff and, and, and you... You wonder how do you, you where did where did this get started? Well, I, I don't want to go all the way back right. to to the early early days in in, in Great Britain with mm-hmm. this stuff, but it really hit its growth spurt in the late '60s and early '70s, um, and it's been credited. Now there, there's people that, that that argue this isn't true, mm-hmm. but it's been credited that. That, that, that the growth was uh, was pushed by by a white militant group called Posse Comitatus mm-hmm. in the late '60s. That was what um, I found. Yeah, yeah. Um, now again, these uh, this is something that that a lot of the modern people deny. Yeah. But they're the Which ones. Which means force of the people, right? Uh, it, yes, yes. Posse Comitatus. Uh, but this was a white sovereignty movement that believed that the United States was being controlled by a Jewish cabal. Well, and it, it's funny because you know you say that. And I hate whenever there's a right-leaning movement, I don't like to be like, ah, racist, you know? I hate that. Partially because even though when I take a, a I side with test, uh, I lean a little bit left, but I, st- I even get called victim of that just being a libertarian. Yeah. 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 But all that said... It is so funny that, 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 that we all consider ourselves a member of the Libertarian Party, and he takes it and leans left, and I take it and lean over there just, just sh- slightly to the left of Hitler. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so... Wait, what? We'll take an eye side with one day. It's scary what, what comes up. I probably wouldn't come quite that far over now. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, so I know a few of these people, and I have not met one yet that is, like, just overtly hang black people, but a lot of them have very low-key racism a lot of the ones i've personally met yeah. this is not speaking to everyone i haven't met right. or you know yeah. whatever uh, and and a lot of them are in the uh a lot of them are in the movement that believes that the united states is a christian nation and uh particu- yeah. particularly yep. the ones that are um that recognize god as the soul uh you know as their soul right. uh, uh uh sovereign um so that they've the reason Posse Comitatus gets the credit for a lot of this is in the 1970s they ran a lot of uh, uh, classes on how to become a sovereign citizen mm-hmm. all over the country, and largely the, the the system they developed is still being pushed by other organizations, and you can go take these classes on how to to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the first Third, first things that you're supposed to do is is you're supposed to renounce your citizenship, and it goes back to that idea that I do not consent to being governed. Right. The consent of the governed. Uh, how would you go about renouncing your citizenship according to these sovereign citizens? Do you do you think? Because I kind of want to look at that and then look at law. Well, I know. Don't you don't you just like uh, burn your ID card or something? You make a YouTube video yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> announcing that you are no longer a citizen of the United States and. Then you send a link to whatever .gov email address you can find, and it's done. Yeah, uh, most of these say that 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 if you uh, if you refuse delivery of of any mail with a zip code on it, that's one way. <laughs> uh, you have to uh, okay, okay, because because the zip Sorry. the zip code is federal government, and you're consenting into the contract if you accept this. Uh, the other thing they say is uh, that if you use uh, uh, if if you don't use your 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 driver's Weird. license, uh, and, and and we'll get into paper people in a minute with this mm-hmm. stuff and the idea, uh, but but this is what they say is renouncing citizenship. Uh-huh. So you're not 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 uh, taking part in this. The problem is that we have a constitutional way to renounce our citizenship. So I I get that, but if they are truly and entirely um, questioning or or refusing to legitimize the uh, Constitution, then why would they follow the Constitution's method well, for renouncing their citizenship? I understand that. But if you believe... Let, let, let me play devil's advocate with you. Okay. If you believe the way to become a sovereign citizen is to renounce your citizenship, aren't you de facto recognizing that citizenship is legal? Oh, absolutely. So by just... 
by to me by going through the process of renouncing your citizenship, you're recognizing that oh, citizenship is a real thing. Yeah, uh, which is is troubling to me. Which is a lot of what you see in this movement is. Picking and choosing which parts to recognize and which ones not yeah. to. So so if you wanted to renounce your citizenship, if, if anybody out there wants to, there is a legal way to do so. Uh, what, what there is, is a way by which it will be recognized by the U.S. government. Yes, there, there you go. Uh, and, and what it requires <laughs> is you have to go to a foreign country. Mm-hmm. You have to appear before a U.S. magistrate, before mm-hmm. an ambassador at an embassy. You formally renounce your citizenship, and you are no longer a U.S. citizen. Quick there, question. Yeah. What is the difference between an embassy and a consulate? Uh, the recognition of the the nation that is there, uh, a, a consulate tends to be in nations that 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 are not recognized. Their recognition is 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 questionable. Okay. So we've got somebody there to take care of the Americans, but they're not yet recognized by our State gotcha. Department. Okay. Uh, good question. So in Israel, do we have embassies or consulates? We have, oh. believe it or not, we have an embassy in Jerusalem, but we have consulates in Palestine. So, I believe it completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and, and uh, I think we still do. I know one of Trump's campaign promises was that he would move everything to Jer- Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's done that, that but uh, okay. um, good question, though. So there are some downsides to renouncing your citizenship. Uh, and, and, and John, you had one that you, uh, that, that, that you brought up to me earlier. What, what, what was the situation oh, yeah. so, there? So there's this guy, and uh, I can't remember his name. A name comes to mind, but I think it's wrong, so I'm not going to say it. Um, but he made a good deal of money in the Bitcoin movement oh, yeah. and decided he didn't want to be a U.S. citizen anymore. So he uh, found homestead in another country. I want to say a Slavic country, but uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit fuzzy on some of the details. And renounced his U.S. citizenship. Uh, he, about two years ago, wanted to return to the U.S. Not to live, but to because... Visit. Yeah, there was a Bitcoin conference going on. He wanted to come back for a week and got his uh, a visitation visa completely denied on the grounds that they suspected him of trying to reenter. He he made this whole YouTube thing about, look, I have a house here. My money's here. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I just I want to come in and go to this conference. Ends up sending one of those little robots with a screen on it so they can see his face to roam around the place. But, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, uh, it, so the, the, the net result of this is if you become an expatriate, if you if you renounce your citizenship, you um, – you lose the right to re-enter the United States. Now there are ways you can get back in. There are there are things you can do to, to, to regain your citizenship. Uh, at the end of World War II, we had a bunch of expatriates settle in France, uh, mm-hmm. and, and their families have returned in in, in majority. Uh, but there's a lot of lot of uh, hurdles you have to jump to do so. You can't just come back and visit. So there, there there's a downside to to this. Maybe there's a downside uh, if you consider that one. Yeah, depending on your um, perspective. So. I want to go back and look at this verbiage a little bit again, uh, because we've talked a little bit about the the way that sovereign citizens use the language to uh, to, to 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 make their argument. Mm-hmm. One of the first, one of the, the the easiest ones is "We the people of the United States." Mm-hmm. They take that they take that part out there. "We the people of the United States," and they say this means that power rests with the people and their argument is that the free men of this nation founded the nation mm-hmm. and uh, and they founded it as states they founded it as as, as these individual states mm-hmm. um, therefore they didn't found a federal government with any national power that is one of the biggest arguments there I'm a person I don't I don't participate with this it's we the people okay what they what they miss is the, the rest of that we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. Right. And, and while the word more perfect, the words more perfect has always bothered me, what they meant by more perfect, guys, was better than the Articles of Confederation. More yeah. complete, more whole. Yeah, yeah. Well, they literally meant better than the Articles. That's really what yeah. it was. The more perfect that they meant was that we had to do, we had to do something better. Um so, so w- when you look at that, it, it almost it almost necessitates that if you take one clause of that, you have to take the other clause, and you have right. to accept that it that it's a legitimate government. Yeah. Uh, at least in my mind, am I am am, am, am I wrong here? Uh, I'm, I'm you know. I don't. Th- well, so here's the thing. I, I will disagree with you on the on the grounds that I don't think anyone has to accept that any government 
is legitimate. However, I think it is uh, the the document is a recognition that the people forming the government thought it was legitimate. And I think we can generally agree, no matter whether no matter if the number is a half million or ten thousand. That most people accept the U.S. government as legitimate. Well, it's been two hundred and thirty years. Maybe it's time to get on board. Yeah, not only in the country but around the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even beyond that, because um, what it sounds like they're trying to say is, I'm part of the people, and I am not consenting to they this are. government. They are. Um, but in that phrasing, they're not referring to the people of the United States perpetually. They are referring to the people of the United States who are coming together in this instance. In 1787, yes. In this instance, for this purpose, that is all the people that they are referring to there. They are not referring to any... any persons outside of those territories. They're not referring to any persons outside of that time. It is... They are not speaking about you and me and... Everybody else who's here now. One thing I do have to give them credit on generally um, in their movement is uh, the laws of the United States, um, no matter how inane or or no matter how large, uh, are largely followed, uh, not followed, that, that's poor wording, but accepted uh, based on some kind of philosophical and moral argument about legitimacy and these hoops you have to jump through and that makes you legitimate, but if you don't jump through the hoops, you're not legitimate. And it, it, it's kind of a mind game that's largely played on the people. Now, whether it's right, wrong, good, or bad is a different question. But that's that's largely the psychology of how uh, uh, the laws are legitimized. Um, and they have, uh, in a sense, found a way to turn this whole thing on its head and try and use the state psychology against the state. And I do have to at least applaud the strategy. Now, they've been largely unsuccessful for a myriad of reasons. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, I, 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 I do have to kind of applaud the tact, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, and, and so one of the arguments that I've made against this numerous times has been, um, you know, they're, they're picking and choosing and they're applying this when it's convenient. And I, I feel like they could just as easily without referencing any founding documents or anything like that, say, I give, I'm done. I am not, I'm not part of this anymore. Um, but I do see their attempts to get the people who are attempting to govern them um, to recognize the illegitimacy by using the things that they're using to claim legitimacy. So I do get that perspective, um, but I I feel like it's flawed to some degree. Okay. To a significant degree. I, 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 I think I see where you're coming from, mm-hmm. though. The idea that you can just say it... It's not based on law. It's yeah. based on natural law. Right. I am my own person. I don't consent. Yeah. I, I can see now, that. Now, do I think it works? No. No. But um, I I think that is a more true representation of your beliefs than... That's a little closer to the anarchic idea than yeah. the... Uh, yeah. Uh, not quite there, but a little closer well, anyway. It, it's closer to the anarchic idea or it's closer to the, well, I, I believe I am a citizen of texas and texas law is applicable to me but not federal law um who does that remind you of (laughs) anyway yeah we'll we'll, we'll get into that too yay hey i want to get into the the free inhabitants argument and the 14th amendment citizenship argument but we're about 25 minutes into this already you want to talk about this beer a little bit let's do it but i i want to go last because i have two ratings and which one it gets is going to be dependent on you two okay so we are drinking what is it called here? Um, Hot Tub Scholarship Hot Lager. Hot Tub Scholarship Lager by the Rogue Ale Company. Is that right? Or Rogue, Rogue Ales. Rogue I'm... Ales. Uh, do you want to go or do you want me to go? I'll let you go. All right. Let me get a get a good drink here real quick. Mm. I've been talking more than drinking, so I needed to taste that one. Um, I, I, I suspect that I'm going to be an outlier on this one. Okay. Um, just, just on the out... Just on what I know about you guys, that having been said, I've been wrong for like the last six months, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think it's smooth. I think it's got a, um, I think it's got an enjoyable flavor, but it's not a very full flavor. It's, uh, it, it's an ale. It's, 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 uh, it, or a lager, rather. It's a, um, it's a good lager to me. It's, mm-hmm. uh, I, th- I think it's successful at what it does. I'd like to have a little fuller flavor, a little more spice in it, but that's not what you expect from a lager. Yeah. Um, I think that 
I think this is a, I think this is an incredibly safe beer. Uh, whoever you're with, I think is going to enjoy this beer. Uh, but I don't think it's a special beer. Um, so with that, I'm going to go, um, I don't think it quite reaches the benchmark. I'm going to go two, four. Okay. Very cool. Um, so I was actually going to come down at a two, one on this. Okay. Um, I think it has a good flavor. Um, it is very light. Um, it is very light. Kind of citrusy. It's really easy to drink. I think this is actually, where I will give this beer credit is that I think this is a fantastic transition beer from an industrial lager to craft. Well, I would um, agree. It is unquestionably made better than an industrial lager, um, but it is, it's beer light. Well, I'll tell you what I—I uh, I, I didn't say this, but but it is very easy to drink. It is, and it, it, it's a refreshing beer. Holy shit, guys! All oh, right, well, I guess God, I'm gonna, here I, comes John. I guess I'm going to give my lower rating. I'm going to give it a three-five. What? Um, really? I think this is a great beer. Uh, I was going to give it a three eight, but I thought I'm 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 boosting that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, so yeah. I, I I said you know maybe a three five. Uh, I wanted to see kind of where you guys landed, and apparently like. In a whole other ballpark? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I suspected this was going to be an outlier. Um, kind yeah. Of a strange one. So uh, I think it's great. I, I think it, it it achieves that light lager feel, uh, but it's got this interesting like orange cream taste without being overly sweet and candy-like. I'm not getting that at all. Um, you're, you're not tasting any orange? I'm not. It's, it's funny because I actually read, read oh, uh, our producer saying she's tasting the orange. Um, Fine. So I, I read the can in order to try and get a, a feel for what they're going for. And it's funny because you went on and looked up the scholarship. Uh -huh. All that stuff you just read is right here on the can. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, that said, uh, I, I think it's great. I think I because I think if you spice it up too much. You lose that lager. It's it's not I a lager I, anymore. I, I, I do too, but that's more what I would like. Yeah, but but, but I agree. You I think it's a, a I think it's a well done lager. I think this is a tasty lager. I think they made yeah. it as complex as they could have without leaving lager. Yeah, I, th um, I, th I think I it's I think it's a good lager. Um, so. You know, I I just don't think it's I don't think it's special. I yeah. think it's good, um, but I, I I think your rating is is. Very high. Yeah. But um, I was expecting you to be higher than me. I wasn't expecting you to be that much higher than yeah. me. Yeah. If I am, if I'm going to hang at a friend's house, um, there are friends that I would not dare bring this around because they are going to wonder if I have lost my ever loving mind. Yeah. Um, because it is not. It's not flavorful. Full, yeah. yeah. It's not adventurous. It's not full bodied. It 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 doesn't even have a lot of complexity as far as I'm tasting from the front to the middle to the back. There's no bell curve. It, it is it is a fairly flat flavor. And that it's not a bad flavor. It's just not as complex as I think it could be. And I think you can have complexity in a lager. Um but there are also groups of friends that I would take this to a party at their house and go, dude, put that shit down. Try this. And I feel like I could convert a lot of people to going, craft beer's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of good. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, uh, it, it's a good beer. It great just gateway it has beer. its scene. Yeah, great gateway beer. Yeah. yeah. Let's play our game. All right. Um, so will it get you laid? Um I think it will absolutely get you laid if you are dealing with somebody who um, likes industrial beers. Um, I think this will be impressive and knock their socks off. Yeah. It'll get you laid with a basic bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, going she's going to prefer wine coolers anyway, <laughs> so actually no. I'm going to call this a blind date beer for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it's safe. Uh, like you said, I, I, I think your, your craft beer people are going to be like, I could have some better. And I think your industrial people are going to be impressed, but I don't think anybody's going to walk out on you for it. Well, and I think with a craft beer person, being that it's a blind date, I think they will probably appreciate that you didn't come in with some bullshit beer. Yeah. You came in with something that was safe, but maybe wasn't 
totally up to snuff for their taste, but you weren't going to know that. Yeah. Uh, second of all, uh, because it isn't like a, a, a stout, overly complex thing, it's not going to take over the conversation. You get a chance to talk to them and know them. And third, and I think this is a huge one, because the proceeds go to charity, that is a great conversation starter about how you are helping college students yes, by drinking right. beer. Yeah. Scholarship program, much yeah. like when I used to go to strip bars. Yep, exactly. A scholarship program, that's right. We are helping the medical students of the future, they, they, damn it. They are, they are all in college. so um, I'm just saying, they all know anatomy pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, least, at least certain parts of it. I, I, got a I don't want them cutting into me, though. I got a question. Not at the strip club, at least. <laughs> uh, you're, you're in a strip club, and you get, you get terribly injured. Do you let the strippers work on you to keep you alive? Or do you, do, do you trust that they're all medical students? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. No, you go into the VIP room and ask which one of them is a doctor. There you go. That's a good point. That's a good. Yeah. Which one of the clients is yeah. a doctor? Yeah. Because there is one. Yeah. You know there is. Yeah. Or they're, or they're all lawyers. One of the tip. Is there a doctor in the house? Six <laughs> hands go up. <laughs> all right. So, uh, last one is: Is it a lawnmower beer? Hell yes! This is a lawnmower beer. This would be it a, definitely. This is. would be a great beer when you're mowing your lawn. It, it, it's refreshing. The problem is you're gonna you're gonna need a six pack of them because they're they're gonna go down really really easy. Yeah. What's um, the ABV on this? Uh, it is five point something. Four. Five point four. So, yeah. uh, it's it's not like a, a, a session ale, but it it's it's, it's not a heavy. Yeah. It, yeah. You could have six of them and and, and you mow the lawn and without still function without mowing your hedges. So. Um, or your child. Or your child. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. That's scary. All right. So uh, we were kind of all over the place on this one. Yeah, that's, a little bit. Uh, that, that's. Becoming more and more common uh, lately. Yeah, our tastes is, our tastes are, uh, are are separating. All right, I want to talk about this this term "free inhabitant" that we hear a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you think that means? Uh, in that the thing Bernie Sanders is campaigning on a free inhabitant? No, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So it is a non-slave person who resides within the United States. Or within the states, uh, usually. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, within the several states. Right. Uh, the term free inhabitants actually comes from the Articles of Confederation, Article 4 of the Articles of Confederation in 1781, where it says, uh, and this is a quote, the better to secure and perpetuate mutual friendship and intercourse among the peoples of the different states and the union. I love that phrasing every time. The free inhabitants of each of these states shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities as a free citizen in the several states. So they read this and they interpret, interpret this as, uh, as the power resides in the people and the states, not in the federal government. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so this, is the, this is what they quote all the time. You'll, if you watch the U- if you get into YouTube hell on this, over and over again, they'll, you'll hear I'm, a, I'm an Article Four free inhabitant. Uh, which means that that the state laws apply to me, but the federal gov- federal laws do not. Um, when in reality, if you actually sit and read this, all this really means is that 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 your rights in one state would be recognized in another right. state. That was that was the purpose of this. Uh, later on in our own constitution, you know, we we we, we, statu- we make this a statute as well. Right. Your rights do not exist solely in one state. Uh, all the sister states have to recognize it. Yeah. It means the same thing. Um, you think maybe they changed it in the Constitution because that wording was kind of... Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think probably so. Um, and the other problem with this is, is when we get into the idea of 14th Amendment citizenship. Because even if you, if you accept that, you know, if, if you accept that, that, that interpretation, in our own Constitution, the 14th Amendment has been applied, birthright citizenship has been applied... Uh, to to all the states, mm-hmm. if you are born in this nation, you are a citizen of the of of, of the states. Mm-hmm. Um, there, the people that that talk about Fourteenth Amendment citizenship have a have a little different understanding of it. Uh, they believe that that what the Fourteenth Amendment mm-hmm. says. Uh, and what it says specifically is all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the, of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. They take that that and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, and they say that the federal government only has jurisdiction over the District of Columbia mm-hmm. and land that the federal government purchases with the agreement of all the states. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they are not 
that, that they don't fall underneath that. That's not what those words say. Well, I, I, I don't know. If, look at it closely, and, uh-huh. and, and we'll see. All persons born or naturalized in the United States. Uh-huh. Okay, that, that's fine. That's everybody here. But then it says, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Mm-hmm. So you have to accept that, 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 that part, subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Uh-huh. Um, so that would be anybody in territories. Well, maybe it does. Here's the problem. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution says this, okay? Mm-hmm. Exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles squared as may become the seat of the government of the United States, that's the District of Columbia, mm-hmm. and exercise authority over all places purchased by the consent of the states. So what this says is that, that the federal government, it only grants the federal government authority over that. Now, I think what they meant and what most constitutional scholars believe they meant was that the District of Columbia and federal property that was purchased by the federal government was un- under the jurisdiction of the federal government and not the states. Right. But literally, if you read this, it just grants exclusive legislation to the federal to, to the District of Columbia and and the the areas uh, purchased by it. So when you put those two together, you look at it and you go, I'm not subject to the jurisdiction thereof. I was not born in the District of Columbia. Mm-hmm. I was not born on federal property. Mm-hmm. I'm subject to the jurisdiction of my state. That's the argument that is made. And I get that that's the argument that's made. But um, it also includes those people who are born or naturalized um, as being U.S. citizens. So if you're if you're taking that out, because except it says and it doesn't uh, say or. Okay, so it's those people who are born in the U.S. and naturalized and subject to the jurisdiction. Those are three categories of people. But it's but 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 that's while I agree that's what they meant. If you read the words. Uh huh. It, it it it's 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 tough to say because because they put that because they put that and in there does that and is that and a conjunction as this and that or is that that and saying all this and you have to have this as well? Let's have the Oxford Comma debate real quick. So 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 there there. No, there well, I, I mean I, I can tell you uh, if I'm writing a program and I use the and joiner, it means you have to meet both criteria. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that's what it means. So if I say. Um, so you have to be born and naturalized in the U.S., and you have to be subject to the jurisdiction of it. Yeah, so if I say uh, uh, I want you to delete all numbers that are even and divisible by three, it's not going to delete the number three because it's not even. It's going to delete six and 12 and, and so forth. But when you are writing a list of things and you say, uh, when I go to the store, I need to get grapes and bananas and apples. It's all of them. Okay, but you're you're making a list, and just because you get apples doesn't mean you have to get grapes. Yeah, it does. I need to get grapes and apples, and but they're three separate things. Yeah, if, they are not dependent on each other. You are capable of getting grapes, but not getting apples. <laughs> John says I'm not capable of that. If, if that, you if you gave him that 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 list, he would get all of them. Is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. If you gave me <laughs> if you gave me that list, I want grapes and apples and eggs, and I came back with one, and I said, "Well, if you read it, it means I can get any one of these." You would tell me yeah. I was crazy. Well, again, I agree with your interpretation. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they meant. But if you look at a pure okay. grammatical reading, I like blondes and brunettes and redheads. It means I have to have all three. Does that mean you have to have all three? Or yes. Or can't? No, it doesn't. <laughs> you, John, you've moved me over. Yeah. I, I, need, I, need, I need all three. But it does not mean that you have to have no, all three. No, I mean, I, 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 I... So here we go. Th- this has been, for, for a long time now, a very confusing aspect of language that has been abused. Um, but, I mean... If, if if a programmer reads that, uh, that would mean a, a like result would come from satisfying all three conditions. Mm-hmm. Which is impossible. 
and again, we didn't have programmers. Depends then, on how so many there's a different. Have. There's a if you read it in the time period, I, I I think that it was written in a way that they can make a logical argument. I don't agree with the argument, but I think that I think there's a logical step there. And these Fourteenth Amendment uh, citizenships, there, they say that because of that, the only way to become a citizen is either to opt in. Or by being na- by naturalizing, well, well, or or by accepting the contract, by getting a driver's license, by by but anything you've opted into citizenship, okay, or by being born in D.C. or on federal property. Mm-hmm. That anything else, you're a citizen of the state you know in which suck. you were born. You know, it's got to suck. Yeah, being a, a, a philosophical um, a, a sovereign citizen, but you were born in D.C. It's like fuck. <laughs> now I gotta go obey the law. Damn it. So they, they look and at this. And you know they don't fucking accept that. Yeah. So whenever you throw the 14th Amendment back at them, uh, and, 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 and as, as you and I seem to agree, and, and I think John really agrees, but, he, but, he, but, he, but he's trying to, 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 to think logically. I, no, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, and I think that's the way it's yeah. read. It's just if, if I'm going to be grammatically honest. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they, they've got an argument with You're it. You're being programmatically honest. <laughs> That Not is, grammatically honest. That's a T-shirt. Be programmatically honest. Okay. Um, so they'll look at this. They'll look at this Fourteenth Amendment and they'll say, Hope "But you choke but, on your programmer." They'll look at this Fourteenth Amendment and they'll say, "But but what about the Ninth and Tenth Amendments? Don't don't, don't the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, Tenth Amendments contradict this?" Okay. Okay. So they look at this and they see that the Ninth Amendment says. Um, that the enumeration the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. So they're saying, look, we, are, we still retain these the fundamental rights of a sovereign citizen. Okay? Just because you enumerated these things doesn't mean that that's, that's all there is. It specifically says there are other rights. One of those rights is I am a sovereign citizen. Uh, but one of the things enumerated is um, being a citizen. Your status as a citizen. Under the 14th, yes. Uh, but then they look at the 10th, and they say the powers not delegated to the U.S. Um, are reserved to the, the, to the states and the people, right? Mm-hmm. So when you start seeing this, they say, they, say they, don't, they don't even have the authority to do this in the first place. Okay. This was a power reserved to the people, uh, to the states and the people. Mm-hmm. When they look at the original enumerated powers of the Constitution— they don't find the Constitution had the authority to grant this birthright citizenship to begin with. Mm-hmm. Well, if you take with the, the idea of, we've talked about it before in this class, the interpretation of the Constitution, that the earlier it comes in the Constitution, the more power it has, mm-hmm. then you look at it and you say that the Tenth Amendment says that this is null and void anyway. Uh-huh. That's also a logical argument. Now, I think you're making some, some hoops, jumping through some hoops, but there is a logical argument there. It was really hard for me to come through here and find these things, guys. You got to help me out here. <laughs> I was trying to be fair, but there is Clearly. a there, there is a. Would you agree? There's at least some logic to this. I mean, all right, let's jump through this. Sorry. So, you, I, I've always had trouble, and and, and I agree. It's it, it's a common reading of the Constitution that things written earlier have what they call preferred position. Preferred position, yes. Except, I've always looked at it the other way, and my reading is. The Constitution has a means by amendment, so anything later in the Constitution that overwrites something earlier has amended that thing. Yeah, because it I is th- a change to that document. I think you have to answer the question: In what way? Of course, and people are going to get mad at this. In what way can the Constitution be a living document if the more recent changes to it are not actually capable of changing it? It, it, it really depends on your philosophical position uh-huh. on original intent. If, if you're an originalist, then, and, and, and for most of our history, pardon me, I got enough gas to fly to Pittsburgh over here. <laughs> I just stole Dean Martin's joke. <laughs> um, the, uh, if you're an originalist, and through most of our history... The court has been originalist. Right. Now, the last 30 years, they have not been. But for most of our history, they were. Then you always look at original intent. Mm-hmm. And that would be the preferred position argument. So let That me, is changing. Let, let me ask you this. Let's say an amendment comes through to uh, nullify 
Oh gosh, my mind's gone blank. Where where they can take your property for for common use. Eminent domain. They go through to nullify eminent domain. Could the courts then come in and argue? No, eminent domain has preferred position, so that's null and void. Yes. Yeah, I think they could. I don't think they'd be right, but they could. Yeah. Yeah. But that's preferred position. Sure, I'm sure it is. Uh, but but again, that's. I'm not a preferred yeah. position guy, so yeah. you know, they're, they're, yeah. you look at this. But that is, although I'm kind of an originalist, so I, 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 I I'm, I'm kind of in a bad place. <laughs> I'm kind of in a bad place. Um, all right, I want to talk about the Thirteenth Amendment a little bit that we haven't haven't discussed because people don't, you know, the Thirteenth Amendment freed the slaves. Right. Thirteen mm-hmm. free, fourteen made citizens, fifteen gave the right to vote. Right. But the Thirteenth Amendment says, and they make a d- big deal out of this. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist okay. within the United States. Uh-huh. The argument is, aren't slavery and involuntary servitude the same thing? No. They're not? Oh, wait. Sorry. I was thinking voluntary servitude. Slavery and involuntary servitude are the same thing. So why did they put these? Well, the argument here is that, that the Reconstruction Amendments, that the Reconstruction government that was establishing this new nation— and the fact is, we were a new government after that. It was di- right. completely different. Our government changed totally after Reconstruction. That their intent was to create voluntary servitude. Okay. And that's why they put those words, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude. And the only place you find involuntary servitude written in a legal or, or voluntary servitude written in a legal document anywhere is if you go back to English law. And in English law, voluntary servitude is where is how the the landlords established uh, control over serfs tied to the land. And their argument here is that this Thirteenth Amendment was put in place in order to make voluntary servitude possible. Does that make any sense at all to anybody? So we're trying to go back to serfdom. They believe. That the uh, that, that what happened with this amendment, and and now we're going to get into the idea of paper people. They believe that by doing this, they actually created a legal fiction, where we are we are two things. We are ourselves, our own human beings, and we are a person. And a person is a uh, it, it's a corporation. It's a legal entity that was created by the government, and you are a voluntary servant of the government, and that's why you've given up your your rights. This idea of paper people. So, interestingly, um, just looking up the two terms very quickly, the difference um, by definition in slavery and involuntary servitude is that um, involuntary servitude can... um, Include somebody getting paid, but the coercion is in some other form. Yeah. So slavery, you're not getting paid. Involuntary servitude, servitude, you may be getting paid, but the force is, you know, maybe they are going to kill your family or maybe they're going to beat the shit out of you. You're in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Although think, we found ways around that one. Yeah. Think human trafficking. Like you may yep. be getting paid, and they may be giving you some sort of allowance, but they are still yeah, yeah, and, forcing and, you to and, do and, it. And, and I think you're right in that. But they're they're jumping through this hoop, saying uh-huh. that there's a reason why that word was put in there, and that was put in there to say that voluntary servitude was okay. Part of the way they justified this is they went through and said, uh, "Look at the black codes that came out in the South after Reconstruction that said you're free if you're black." But you have to have a job, and if you don't have a job, the state will give you one, and that job will be picking cotton on your old master's plantation. That was voluntary servitude. Well, and how do we have a military without voluntary servitude? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or involuntary that's servitude. One of the exceptions of th- that are on there, yeah. How do you have a draft? Oh, anyway? yeah. How do yeah, you have a draft? Fine. Yeah. Um, so... They start looking at this idea of paper people, the idea that that there is a there's a difference and that the federal government actually created a legal fiction where you are different from your legal identity, your corporate right. identity. And supporters of this have used this in court many, many times. Uh-huh. They'll go to court, uh, you know, are you John Smith? I am not John Smith. I am a person. I am a free inhabitant. John Smith 
is a corporation that was invented by this birth certificate. And there's actually... Who the uh, fuck are they then? There are actually seminars Person. out there. Yeah, there are seminars out there that, 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 that teach you how to do this. And they suggest that... That, that whenever you, this birth certificate happens, they create this fictional paper person, your, your corporation. Mm-hmm. And they believe that, 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 that this all goes back to fiat currency and that paper money mm-hmm. are just, just, just bills. And what they, that, that, that there's, there's an account somewhere with gold and silver. And whenever you put your money in, this money is being moved around from place to place. And that if you can separate yourself from your corporate identity, you can get that money in some way. Is it the pot of gold at the end of the <laughs> rainbow? There's a pot of gold if you're not oh a favorite person. No uh, wonder uh, they're doing uh, this. Uh, apparently, <sighs> apparently. Um, they, 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 they get even wackier than this. Have y'all ever noticed the flags with the gold fringe around the outside? Like the U.S. flag has a gold fringe. The gold fringe is literally... Is that where they're hiding the gold? <laughs> the gold fringe is literally the only thing in the flag code that's allowed to be added to the U.S. flag. Uh-huh. Okay? It, it can be there. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. there. It's okay. But in British law, in British common law, the gold fringe signaled a, uh, a, a naval ensign. Uh-huh. Okay. So they will also argue under this, this, this same argument that you have no right over them because if if they walk in the court and the flag has this gold fringe, it's a naval ensign, and therefore they are on, they are only authorized to enforce maritime law, and they have not violated maritime law. This is a real argument that you can find out there. It's an admiralty flag, apparently. Shit, guys, I can't. I don't think any of these arguments are going to work. I, uh... ooh. They haven't worked. That's yet. a navy flag. <laughs> I don't have to do it. It's a navy flag. Uh, other, other arguments they make with the, with the corporate self is that uh, they believe that if your name appears in all capital letters on a on a corp, on, on a legal document, that the capital letters signify that that is your corporate self and not your self self. And and if you refuse to, and they call this entering into joinder, if you refuse to enter into joinder with your corporate self, you are not liable for any. Uh, uh, in any fees, fines, or punishments that your corporate self gets. Here's the problem. If you appear at court and you enter into joinder, you're accepting responsibility for the crimes that your corporate self has, has, has committed. Mm-hmm. So you have to go to the court and, and deny that you are that person. You are, in, in fact, a, a free inhabitant, and that is a separate person. Your corporate self is something different. Uh, and therefore, you are not liable for your corporate self's crimes. Can you remember the thing, the crimes that your corporate self committed? <laughs> I'm very confused. Uh, it's amazing stuff. You can again, you can get into YouTube. Look this stuff up, guys. If you go on onto YouTube and look this stuff up, you will find case after case of people <gasps> arguing that I, that is not me. I am not John Smith. That is that is my paper self. I am, uh, you know, I'm not liable for his crimes. Can you be called as a witness against your corporate self? And, and, and you were there. But if you are, can you then plead the fifth against it? Because no, it's not you. Because the Constitution. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of what I have. But there was something that John wanted to talk about a little bit and that we've seen a lot. And that's the right to travel. Yes. Traveling, not driving. <laughs> God, I want to be a judge now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think the most popular category of these videos has to do with traffic stops. Yes. And, and quite often when they get stopped, they'll be accused of speeding or some other... It's driving while drinking. Yeah, whatever it is. and the Or quite often driving without a license. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they have like the... They haven't entered in a joinder. Yeah. They have the like license plates that say private or something on there. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, they will make the, the 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 weird statement actually quite often that they are not driving, <laughs> they are traveling. I travel my car from place to place from time to yeah. time. And at that point, the cops travel them to the jail. Yeah. So where does this come from? Um, there is actually a belief among these people, and I actually uh, knew a girl whose name I can't recall at the time. Uh, who was planning on going to law school. This was when we were, you know, 18, 19. Uh, and she actually was the first one, before I even knew what a sovereign citizen was or anything, uh, and I, I bought into it because, you know, why not? 
uh, told was she cute. Yeah, she that's was. why. That's yeah. why. Um, but uh, told me the story about how driving only applies to uh, uh, corporate activity or, or commercial. Commercial. That's yeah, the word. Yeah. yeah, commercial activity. And there's actually these laws, and and speeding speed limits do not apply. <laughs> to non-commercial activity. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, I mean, you're going to be a lawyer, so why not? So so she went on about this, and, and I kind of like ignore. you know, I, I listened. I was like, that's cool, um, but didn't really get into it later. A lot of what, and I think this is really interesting. So their argument lies on a few pieces. One, that, that we have inalienable rights that cannot, that, that are guaranteed by the Constitution, and laws cannot be made against. And two, that our right to travel um, is one of those, I think is, is, is yeah. a, you know. And three, that right to travel includes whatever the common transportation of the time is. Um, and that also... Teleportation, I've seen Star Trek. Yeah. And that also, beyond that, time. that it is also included in our general right to happiness, or pursuit of happiness. Um, so there's a few different pieces that you can go through court <laughs> cases here, but the, the biggest linchpin in this whole argument rests on a case called Thompson v. Smith. Um, and I want to, I want to go through, this is a, actually a very involved case. I want to try and go through as briefly as I can the details of this case. So Thompson is a gentleman who has apparently had some trouble with the law over, over the years and is apparently not well liked by the local legal authorities, including the chief of police, Mr. Smith, um, and the courts. He ends up getting called in to court twice on speeding tickets, and the court tries to revoke his license at said point. And he inf- he's apparently at least... Uh, has a, a passing familiar with the law because he informs the court at that point that the the local laws say that his license cannot be revoked until three infractions within a year. And he has only had two, so they cannot do that. They actually rescind his uh, uh, license uh, uh, revocation um, and give him the ticket and he pays it and it's fine. He gets called into a court a few months later for driving without a license. Uh, because the city had amended the code and added a section C to the existing code, and the section C allowed the chief of police to revoke anyone's license uh, if they deemed them unfit to drive, in very general terms. And this How mis- fucking crazy is That's that? That's scary. Yeah, and this Mr. Smith apparently decided that Mr. Thompson was unfit to drive, and he gets called into court, and he says, I've known well, a police chief or two I would not trust that with. Yeah. He says, well, that may, may very well be true that the, the code was amended, and it may very well be true that uh, Mr. Smith here has revoked my license, but I can't be held accountable for that because I was never notified. Yeah. At which point Mr. Smith says, well, I sent a letter. I can't guarantee it arrived. So the court then says, well, you're not liable for this, but has him in the court proceedings inform Mr. Thompson that his license has been revoked and says, okay, now you've been informed. I don't, you know, no more excuses. Well, he then turns around and sues the city, and this makes it all the way to the Supreme Court of Virginia. Um, and the Virginia Supreme Court rules that they even in their own rulings say that that certain uh, restrictions can be put on a right to travel. And they say in there that much more strenuous uh, uh, restrictions can be put on commercial travel, but that uh, uh, your right to drive or use the transportation of the day is included in your right to travel and your right to happiness. And that because of that, any restrictions on that type of travel need to be uh, uh, very carefully done and they need to be uniform they can't be arbitrary from one person to another um they also uh strike down the particular law where the chief police can revoke it uh on the grounds that an executive branch has usurped the authority of a legislative branch um so this goes through now here's what's odd to me about this case i actually think this can be a very well-made argument uh for certain restrictions because they do say it can be regulated to a degree um, made in the state of Virginia. 
But I don't get how somebody in Texas gets to use this argument yeah, yeah. from the Supreme Court of Virginia for them. Maybe if they all flocked to Virginia and got their license there and argued that the license is good everywhere, yeah, yeah. and then they all have Virginia license, maybe I can see something here. But I don't get how this applies to all 50 states. You know, you, uh, you're you talking about applying to, to, to 50 states. Uh, I, I haven't seen the one you're talking about, and I think it's a fascinating argument. Mm-hmm. But I did see one in North Carolina. I was looking at it this morning where uh, uh, a, a guy had been called in for, for traffic violations, and, and, and he argued uh, that, the, uh, that, that North Carolina, that there were two states of North Carolina. He argued that uh, there was the, 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 state, the free state of North Carolina, which was entered into uh, by the free people of North Carolina. And then there was the modern state of North Carolina, which was forced on the people by by military reconstruction, um, which I think is a, a legitimate argument. Yeah. And and he argued that 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 nobody could say that a uh, 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 you know that, that that a government that is that is instituted by military law was entered into freely by the people, and he actually argued that that it was an unjust government. Um, uh, I get that, it. that that that. that, that that he, his problem wasn't that he was ob- disobeying the traffic law. He said, yes, I was disobeying a traffic law. But if I had been given the ticket by a, uh, a member of the free state of North Carolina's government, mm-hmm. I would pay it because that's the legitimate government. I was given it by this military reconstruction government, which is illegal. And you know he's kind of got a point I there. I fucking get it. Now uh, he got called back three times. Uh, uh, the first two times he showed up, the state was not ready to uh, to fight him, so they just they they uh, they they put it off. The third time, the police officer did not show up, and they just dismissed the case. But uh, so so his his case kind of uh, he kind of won out. Interesting. Uh, interesting argument. Uh, I find it interesting. To me, it sounded like the state didn't want to deal with that issue. So by not showing up, they were able to dismiss the case without creating precedent. Yeah, right. I mean it. Uh, it it it's interesting, and, and it kind of reminds me of our friend uh, uh, Cargill um, and <coughs> this whole thing, where he's he's begging them to arrest them, and and they like, yeah, we're gonna let you go oh, on this one. Different yeah. person. Yeah. Car. But. Did I say that right? You said Cargill. That's a different guy. Oh my God, Carrick. Karen, yeah, so Karen. sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Neil. Please, please, Neil please arrest me, uh, and they yeah. won't do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But 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 you know, there's there's these arguments that are out there. Um, that that that's that's fascinating. You reminded me of a story. Story time with Mike for a minute before we before we close this off. You were talking about about this this girl that that you knew when you were in high school that was kind of cute that told you this story. When I was in high school, we were out riding around at lunch like we shouldn't have been at school. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had open campus, and. You know, memories, memories play tricks on you. I think I was driving. Ran a stop sign. Mm-hmm. And Carrie just lost her mind. Oh, my God, you ran this. I didn't see it. Or I, I'm, I'm almost certain I was the one driving. Didn't see it. Just ran the stop sign. And my buddy Mark, who was with me, uh, and I can remember the rest of this pretty distinctly because uh, Mark and I were pretty quick at beating off each other. And Mark says, don't worry about it. It's an optional stop sign. And, and she fucking believed it. Oh, didn't and, she? oh Carrie, Carrie's like it was not. You know, I looked. At, I, I, you know, I pulled over. I said, Carrie, I, I made the block. Came back. Carrie, look at that stop. It's got a white line around it. Stop signs with white lines around them are optional between the hours of ten and two. And I think Carrie is probably still driving around somewhere, running stop signs between ten and two. <laughs> anyway, that's just a story I wanted oh to share God, before I got through. Optional stop signs. Uh, anyone with I white lines. I wonder how much money you have cost her. Uh, no, she's, she's cost herself. <laughs> she's in court that's somewhere. stupidity right there. She's in court somewhere oh, arguing it. Uh, yeah. yeah, they actually they actually took uh, took the. Uh, uh, oh no, never mind. My brain shut off. I can't remember the story now. Uh, so did, did we cover everything on this? I think we have. Uh, and and it kind, of, kind of a long one, but, yeah. but you know, it was, it was an interesting topic. Interest- so, so what are your thoughts on, on, on these sovereign citizens? Um, I, I, I think that um, I think they're, they're greatly mistaken. Uh, I, I think it's been 230 years that we've been living under the Constitution. Everybody ought to just get on board with that one. Um, I, but I, I did find myself, as I was reading the arguments, 
not so much agreeing with them, but seeing the genius in how they 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 can build an argument by by piecemeal. Genius. Uh, the argue the, the well it, it takes it I, it does take a bit of genius to go through and, and pull the and reading and it, I'm going dedication. I'm looking no reading doubt. and I'm going. You know what? If I just read this this part, you are correct. You are correct if I read this part, but if I read the next sentence, you're not. Yeah. yeah. The fact that they, they they build these arguments through through uh, reading parts of different documents and accepting a document one time and not accepting a document another time. Yeah, one of the uh, that that's my issue with it. the Constitution is the law of the land when it helps me, but it's not when it doesn't. Well, right. and, and one of their big pushes that we didn't really get into in this, uh, uh, and this was was a huge one by the person I know who is a sovereign citizen that I used to work with, but they think that the, the courts cannot make laws. Only the legislature can. Right. So anything <laughs> ruled by precedent, well, I mean, not in a modern era, that they're, re- they're really not, whether I like it or not. Uh, anything done by precedent is not valid. Yeah. Yet, the linchpin of the argument you always see him making <laughs> is a precedent that's right. ca- court case. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, or even if it's not a court case, it's a you know it, it's still a precedent that was set you know free man you know yeah. free yeah. and the legislature set those laws yeah. whether it's a city council a state yeah. or yeah. you know although I do agree with them that 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 the legis- that, that the court system cannot make laws they can just interpret them yeah. but so I do have a question here um, as someone um, who subscribes to a fringish. Um, political belief. I have numerous times been told, if you don't like it here, move to Somalia. Um, Why is it always Somalia? Because Somalia is in a state of turmoil. Always. And um, the people who are saying that are trying to make the argument that the kind of government that I want is the kind of government that Somalia has. But it's not. Exactly. <laughs> but that's what they're trying to say when they do that. Yes, but, I want a warlord government with different war chiefs attacking each yeah, other. And, I've yeah, I've never argued for that. I, I just tell all the conservatives that when the liberals in power. I tell the liberals that when the conservatives in power. <laughs> yeah, I, I can get both of them. But anyway, um, so the argument that I've made against this, if you don't like it here, move sort of thing, is I'm, I'm working to change the government in the manner that is actually set forth um, by the, by, uh, in, the, in our structure. I'm working within that structure to try to change it. Um, and requiring I, dumb people to read. And I... Now you can get an audio book now. Yeah. And so the question that I have is, it doesn't seem reasonable to me that they can attempt to be sovereign citizens on this land. Um, yeah, I agree. And so is it then a valid argument to say, cool, be so, like there are ways that you can have your own land. Liberal land. Well, there's that. Um, but there are ways that you can have your own land that is not under a government's control and you can truly be sovereign. Like if you genuinely there believe. There really isn't though. I mean, buy your own fucking island or... Go to Liberal Land. Like, there are but ways. But you can't get into Liberal Land. We looked at that. We, we, yeah. I, that sounds wonderful, but you, you know, you'll know, you get arrested going into it. I want to do that. I want to get arrested I going go in. into their prisons. Yeah. Different thing. But anyway, like, is that a valid argument in that case? Because they are not trying to work within the system, or does that still not fly? No, I mean, I, I, I think that um, to some degree... Uh, political change comes in, in two forms. Mm-hmm. One, by uh, convincing the populace uh, to such a degree that uh, a military uprising at that point would be futile. You know you have the numbers and people yeah. just say, we'll go with what you want. It's or either two. slow encroachment or rapid violent. Yeah, yeah, because I guess they are arguing for a revolution of yeah. sorts. So, okay, very cool. It was just a thought that occurred to me and I kind of wondered... How that plays out. Yeah, and, and for myself, I find myself in an interesting place because there are parts of these people's argument that I would really like to be true. There are other parts I don't. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I kind of find myself in a place with them where I want some of what they're saying to be true the same way I want the MCU to be real and I want to have superpowers. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to fight the villains. I don't want Thanos around. But, you know, yeah. it would be nice to have an Iron Man outfit, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, but I also realize I don't live in the MCU. Yeah. I live here in Earth-136 where, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, interestingly, one of the... Um, 
there's a guy named Mike the Cop that I think you've actually watched yeah, his I've videos. Watched yeah, he's pretty good. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so he was doing an episode on Sovereign Citizens. I watched that one. And I kind of loved that he was like, you know, I wouldn't really mind just like taking a chunk of land somewhere and just giving it to all the people who claim to be sovereign citizens. Like, go be sovereign there. It's yeah. cool. Hash it out. See how you know. See go, how how long it lasts before a government establishes. Well, and and go be sovereign. Have whatever like consensual thing you want to go on there. Have forty five countries there. Have one doesn't matter. But this is your land. We've separated it from the U.S. Go have your deal. Um, and there's a part of me that kind of really likes that idea yeah and just say cool get the fuck out it's fine go the fuck away this is non-us land do your thing this is crazy no law land yeah fine yeah fine yeah have your little anarchic i have uh, a dick load of friends who would go there yeah yeah and then i have a half dick load of friends who would come back i would visit <laughs> yeah oh. armed I, yeah, I have to be armed because somebody would shoot me when I open my you mouth. You know, here's yeah, the I thing. Know. I'm completely on board with, with throwing away a lot of the laws we have. I just don't want these guys making the new ones. They're not <laughs> the ones I That's want. That's a huge part of you it. Know? Yeah. Yeah. These motherfuckers are not the yeah. ones I want writing yeah. laws. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. It's a good point. Me. Good point. And it's, only me. It's kind of like the people who push for Texas. Not me. No. Oh, thanks. It's kind of like the people who push for Texas independence. You know why. Yeah, like, no. I don't want the federal government to be, but I don't want Texas writing the laws either. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Because I we've done such a good theocracy. job. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord help me. Is this it? it we, we, we were I a shitty we're republic once before. Point. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think we've covered this. Why don't you close us out there, Madam Mistress? Uh, so, if you've enjoyed this show, don't forget to hit us up on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy, or you can go to our website, do all sorts of cool things, like subscribe to our newsletter. That is sixpackphilosophy.com. Check out our swag at teespring.com slash stores slash sixpackphilosophy. Uh, let us know if you've got any shows that you want us to do. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, and we hope you have too. Cheers. 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 Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.